Today we'll be using a new NuGet package that allows us to use Playwright with .NET to make it so much easier to write tests. We'll be going through the setup of a test project, and we'll also be going through some neat tips and tricks to work with .NET in Playwright. First, we're going to start with opening PowerShell in the directory of our choice. Then we're going to run these commands on the screen to generate a project. Once those commands are done, we're going to run .NET run. You can see that the program worked because it generated this screenshot here for us. While that's neat, we don't really want to run our test this way. We'd rather use the .NET test framework to be able to do that. In order to create the test, we're going to start by adding a new .NET project called Playwright Test. And with that end unit project complete, we're going to add the .NET package Microsoft Playwright end unit. Then we're going to run .NET build, and then we're going to run Playwright install to install our browsers. At this point, you're going to want to edit your tests. So let's open those in Visual Studio. So we're going to grab the sample from the Playwright instructions and paste it here. So now that we've pasted the sample into our unit test, we're able to build, show our test explorer. And then in the test explorer, we can go ahead and run our tests. All right, perfect, it's working. Okay, so now we have a new test that we're gonna to use to go to Google. And that should help us see what's happening here. Since these other tests just evaluated JavaScript on the page, they didn't really do anything. But here you can see that when this actually runs, it's gonna run headlessly so that we don't see a browser. But generally that's not super helpful. What's really the advantage here? To show you that advantage, I'm gonna go back over to the console really quick. The first thing you can do with the console is you can set environment variables. So here we're gonna set headed equal to one. And then we're gonna run our .NET test again. And when we run .NET test, what you'll see is that it'll now open the Chrome browser up for us so that you can actually see your test execute. And that's neat, but what if we wanna run Firefox? Then we're gonna run .NET test again and we'll see what browser pops up. And then you can see it flash up on the screen, but it was Juggler that popped up. So now here, without rewriting the test, we can control the browser that's running with an environment variable. And we can also control whether it's visible or not visible. This way we're not coding directly to a specific browser and having to update our code or environment config all over the place. And before I show you the way to make this really easy, let's take a look at diagnostic logging. Here we're gonna set an environment variable of debug to PW API. Now you can see our output has changed. Because we added the debug environment variable, we get a whole lot of console log spam, but it's telling us what Playwright's doing behind the scenes. This just gives you a whole lot more tracing from the API. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set all my environment variables back to their defaults. So you can see now we're back to the standard setting. Well, what if we wanna do this without setting environment variables? Here I've added three run settings to my project. We have Playwright run settings. In this one, we're just gonna set the environment variable of PW debug to one. In this one, we set PW debug to console. And here we use PW API. So let's just run these, but first we have to set the run settings. So inside the test, we're going to go to configure run settings, select solution wide run settings file. And then we're gonna choose the API logging one. And then we're just gonna run from here, just like we would from .NET test. Now in our test summary, we can see the exact same output we saw in the console. Let's switch over to console and see what happens. So again, I'm gonna update my run setting. And then let's run it here. Debug basically sets it to being a headed state. So if all you wanna do is run in headed mode, you can set the debug setting just so you can see what happens while it's running. Finally, let's use our Playwright Inspector settings, which is going to set PW debug equal to one. And now we get something completely different because what shows up here is the Playwright Inspector, which allows us to interact with the page while it's running through the steps. So I'm going to close this really quick. I'm going to go back here and add another event, and I'm just going to click on something that I make up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and rerun this test. And what you can see is that every time it gets to an action that Playwright needs to do, it goes ahead and stops it. So if we go and do a step over here, you can see it navigates and you can see that it's waiting for the selector to show up. You can also click this explore here and see exactly what's out there. So if you were going to look for that, Playwright would look for that as image all equals Google. The other thing you can do is while you're in here, if we use that same selector here in this console window, Playwright will show us what it can see. It returns us this image object back with all of this information. So you can use that to help you build your tests as well. If you want to see more Playwright, and I'm sure you do, subscribe and check out other features that are available to Playwright.